We have uh, studied the tops, tops also from the earlier days when uh, we had the possibility to be part of the European study and also to be one of the first to uh, operate a little bit more hybrid uh, cases where we did fusion on one level and, a prosthesis, and the TOPS prosthesis on the second level. Um, let's, oh, next now. Uh, and uh, we worked with uh, many non-fusion technologies over the years and from the year 2005 on worked with TOPS. Of course, it makes sense bio biomechanically as proven in cadaver and bench testing. And I was asked to uh, give you some more details on the tests that were done uh, in the laboratory before starting all clinical applications. And after that, give the results of our uh, two level patients. Of course, it has the potential to make a clinical difference in patients who have moderate uh, to severe spinal stenosis, uh, especially the ones with a near normal disc height and a grade one enterolysthesis due to facet problems. But the main concern was, of course, from the beginning on, could it withstand all those forces uh, in uh, rotation and in shear, and uh, would there be a screw loosening problem? And uh, as was already mentioned in the earlier slides, that there's still, uh, after all those years, only a 0.2% screw loosening after more than eight years of clinical application in more than 1,400 screws, uh, which is, of course, more than acceptable. And uh, we think that it has more to do with, uh, it has a lot to do with the unique surface and uh, on the screws, there's a treated surface on the screws. And of course, the crossbar design, which goes from left to right instead of going up and down, as with all fusion uh, and all other dynamic systems. There was a test done in sheep where uh, uh, a combination was uh, studied with of uh, screws that were that under had undergone this patented surface treatment and with blasting and calcium phosphate and uh, the second group where the normal non-blasted screws were used and after 6 months the sheep were uh, sacrificed and the pull out strength was tested in the laboratory and it was seen that the pull out the force was two times, 2.3 times uh, the, um, uh, in, the, um, in the blasted screws compared to the non-blasted polished screws. And uh, the fact that the two crossbars connect the same uh, pedicle also uh, might prevent screw micro motions and might minimize the effect of, of the minimize the risk of screw loosening. And to look at this, um, we studied the difference between tops and between the other available um, uh, device at the time, Dynasys, to look, at, to look at rotational torque load on the screw uh, bone interface, which is of course the most pro um, uh, problematic part. And to do this, um, a test setup was made to uh, see if uh, the top system uh, the design lends itself to load sharing among all four screws. Um, this here in the slide you see that on the top of the screw near the screw head, there uh, um, we, ma the, we made this uh, strain gauge which could uh, measure the torques and measure all forces that are on the screw and then put in the laboratory and measure all four screws independently. This was done uh, by, at uh, uh, a special biomechanical laboratory under the rights of Professor Tim Wright. For both uh, implants, we used the ideal situation, meaning to, uh, we wanted to know if tops could withstand the forces uh, after complete facetectomy, and for dynasis, there was no decompression done because we know that dynasis is not made and it's not allowed to be used in more than uh, minimal facetectomy. And if you then look at the peak uh, strain uh, forces among all four screws, you see all four screws have a different uh, color. And you look at the lateral bending uh, forces that, uh, that uh, are created. With the tops, there's very little uh, peak uh, strain. And with the dynasis, there's a, an immense uh, diversion of the loads among the four screws. The same goes for flexion extension. Uh, and uh, if you measure this all, there is a 36% lower uh, peak strain in uh, flexion extension and 46 lower in lateral bending. And top system uh, demonstrate better range of motion than the dynasis system. 
but we know that it's not only flexion extension or load on the screws which is important, it's also the quality of motion which is important. And two, uh, two sets of tests were done, one for in Professor Wilkes' lab and one with Brian Cunningham, Cunningham in Baltimore to, use at, uh, to look at adjacent segment disease. And if you look at uh, this uh, slide, where we look at the dynamic stabilization, um, we see that um, um, in the intact spine, uh, you, have, uh, um, you have this strength in actual rotation. And of course, when you make a defect, um, uh, you, you have a, a more uh, um, instability. And with the dynasis in rotation, there's not a, lot, not a lot that you can win. And with the fixation, there's a lot to be won. And if you look at look at tops, it provides a near normal rotation, uh, near normal uh, uh, rotation uh, possibility compared to a defect side. And if you look at this slide, you see that uh, it provides a near normal motion in flexion, extension, and lateral bending, uh, even in sagittal translation, and even after wide decompression. And that's for us still very important that with the top system, we can do a complete facetectomy, because it's so often that you see if you do a minor decompression that you cannot go under the facet joint and you cannot do enough for decompression without having to sacrifice most of the facet joint. What's also very important is to see why do we really need normal motion in one segment. And uh, this Brian Cunningham test shows that uh, when you look at an intact compared to decompression, compared to pedicle screw rod system, and co then compared to tops, and we look at adjacent segments, here you see in the, bl the dark blue is the, is the affected level or the treated level. The, the green is a level above and the gray is a level below. And you see that after destabilization, of course, you get a, a, a lot of actual rotation movements. And um, after fusion, you see a lot of, you see more rotation uh, in the level above and the level below, which means that if you do a fusion, then we will be much more strained on the level above and the level below. But when you do a tops, th this is, um, uh, put back to the normal, uh, possibi normal possibilities. There's no extra strain on the level above and the level below. So what we did in our study, we, like, like I told you, we were part of the one level uh, solution, but after a while we were more, uh, we saw that we had a lot of patients where we could do two levels. And we studied these two level patients for the same indication, of course, the lower level more degenerated, um, the disc too bad to be kept mobile, and the level above with a, again a severe stenosis and severe uh, facet problems, and to do some kind of topping off with the top system. We had 15 patients in the period of uh, 2006 to 2007, four males and 11 females in the normal age group for this kind of procedures. And if we look at fast back after the, over the years, and we studied, studied them all five to seven years, we see that it is a sustained uh, improvement. There's not a lot of um, uh, problems over the years. Same goes for leg pain, same goes for ODI. And you see, to start off, all these patients were very disabled. It's not just a little bit of problems that they had before surgery. Uh, we saw in all, the, in all those cases that we had retained motion, inflection, extension, and lateral bending. We had no screw loosening in the mobile parts. We had no adjacent segment issues. We had no increase in enterolysis. And we had, in all patients, a retained disc height at five to seven years. We had one cardiac syndrome, uh, which resolved rapidly after removal of the hematoma. Uh, same operation, re same day reoperation, and we think this has something to do with the bulkiness of the initial uh, tops. And with the smaller profile that's now available, you have um, it's much easier to look under the device and to see if there's any recurrent bleeding. So um, this problem should be solved. We had one screw loosening, but it was not screw loosening in the mobile level, it was in the, in the fuse level. And we were able to remove the sacral screws and keep the mobile part in place. We had one revision to fusion. So an, an illustrative case is, of course, the ones that have a very degenerated L5S1 level, where you're not really sure if the back pain comes from this level, but where you see that the disc is still mobile. But and you see in the lower part of the slide that L5S1 is not the stenotic level. L4, L5 is the stenotic level with the real bad facet joints. 
Here we did the, the, um, the standard x-ray at six weeks, the combination of the rigid part down and the, uh, and the mobile part up. And at six weeks, we also did dynamic x-rays where you see that the, the device really moves inside like it should move in the laboratory. At five years, this motion is retained. It's maybe a little bit less, but also if we look at all our results and all our patients, the amount of flexion extension doesn't really change a lot over the years. And maybe also only reflects the normal aging process of the patients. At five year postoperative, this same case, you see that also in lateral bending, there's retained motion. We also did a few cases with a two-level fusion and one level above, which is, of course, again, a little bit more technically demanding and is a little bit larger surgery, but the same uh, results applied with normal flexion extension at three years and, uh, and retained lateral bending. So with this immediate, immediately and sustained uh, improvement, we also have the impressions that our patients do better with the mobile solution on top than with the two-level fusion. Thank you.